God. Father, we worship you. We praise you and we magnify your name. We thank you for loving us beyond what we are capable of being lovable. We thank you for loving us, Lord God. In spite of everything that we've done, yet you still love us, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Lord, we worship and adore you. So, Father, we thank you for the word today. We thank you, Lord God, for all that you're doing, all that you are, all that you have, and all that you're going to do. Thank you, Lord, for your glory shall fall in this place like never before. We wait on your glory. We wait on you, Father. Holy Ghost, have your way. Have your way, Holy Ghost. Have your way. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, God is so good. And his mercy endure forever. And ever and ever. Thank you, Lord. Whew. I, just, I love worship, y'all. I love worship. I love worship. Whew. My Bible tells me that the angels are before the Lord all the time just saying, Hallelujah, praise the Lord, Hallelujah. They're just in constant praise unto the Father for His goodness, for who He is. There's none so greater than He. Shama kundirebe shalabasa kendira bosonde. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. Glory to God. Shanti de Bosso. Hit a Bosso Condere Vishita. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Well, I want you to greet your neighbor today. And I want you to tell your neighbor, I come to receive a greater revelation. Hallelujah. Greet your neighbor. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Construction Church, and in behalf of our pastor, we want to welcome you. Amen? Amen. 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 Well, you can be seated. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank Glory you, Lord. God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. How beautiful. I receive your seat. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. I receive your seed. Amen. Thank you, Father. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. I receive your seed. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Well, I'm going to say this. Amen. Um, I'm going to acknowledge our pastor in his absence today. Amen. He's at, sitting at the seat of our apostle. Amen. And I'm telling you, the revelation is flowing, flowing and flowing. That means Life Construction Church will be growing, growing and growing. I receive your seat. Hallelujah. Glory to God. That means it will be growing. Amen. Hallelujah. I receive your seed. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Our pastor um, has been going uh, for the past several weeks. I receive your seed. Uh, uh, apostle, I receive your seed. Apostle has been teaching on becoming a money coming demonstrator um, for the past several weeks, and I think he's on 12 today, or is it 13, 12? And those that will stay, we will continue in that. Um, I'm going to tell you a few things that the Lord gave me. I'm going to share some. I'm going to share a lot of Apostles' notes because um, I want to move right into what Apostle has been sharing with us. Amen? Amen. Um, I'm going to say this to you. This is what the Lord told me last night, but this morning. We are right now in seed training. Um, the body of Christ or the world has for so long, for generations and generations, has put in our mindset, and I'm, I'm sharing this for those that are with us today for the first time. He was um, sharing with us that, that the church should be without, broke, and disgusted. It's okay, and that's the way you, that's your lot in life. Uh, I've even heard that, uh, you know, I shared this, that we even take a vial of poverty, the church. I don't see that nowhere in my word. Have you ever read it? Read that in your word? Have you ever read it in your word? See, what we believe here at Life Construction Church is the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. Amen? Amen. And so we, we believe that God wants us to live a life of prosperity. Amen. Do, is it a prosperity gospel? No. Because let me say this to you. God is prosperity. Amen. Everything about God. Everything that he has, all that he is, all that he has, it is his glory. And his glory is nothing but God godliness. And it's nothing but gold and silver. And like I shared on last week, why would he sit on a throne of gold if he want us to and sit in poverty? Does that make any sense to you? Anybody new in the house, does that make any sense to you? That he wants you to live in poverty, but he wants to sit on a gold throne. Does that sound like a father to you? If you were walking, as, if you were a multi, multi-millionaire and you had children, but you want your children to be on the street begging. And I understand that we want to teach our children good work ethics and I'll teach them how to make their own way. But if you were loaded, if you were packing, I guarantee you, you're going to share some of the glory. Amen? So... In this seed training, we've, we've learned that we cannot obtain wealth if we don't sow toward wealth. Amen? So we have to learn this principle that God has in his word that he has not changed. God says, I'm a man. I do not lie. I'm not a man. I do not lie, and I change not. Amen? Amen? Amen. So before I get to scripture this morning, we are, we are seed training to become money coming demonstrators. Without training properly, we will eat our seed or we will destroy ourselves, therefore, with the harvest. 
Um, a couple of weeks ago, I asked you a question, and I said, if God will give you, because all of us read, raised our hands, said that we will sow. If God gave you a million dollars today, would you tithe off that million dollars? How much is a tithe off a million dollars? Anybody know? Would you give $100,000 to the church? Now, what I said was, I didn't come back and say this to you, was offer your $100 or you're sowing 10. Offer your $300 or you're sowing 30. Offer your $1,000 or you're sowing 100. So you got to check yourself. And God is not going to place nothing in your hand that you can't sow. He's not going to give you no million dollars and you're not taking care. Now, I'm going to tell you, they got people that, that, that work on their jobs and been working for a long time. And they've sold over the years. They paid their tithes over the years. But then they get this revelation. Well, my sister needed some money. Or my auntie, or my mama, or my brother or my nephew, they needed some money. So I used, because I, I had my shopping to do, so I used my tithe money to take care of that. But I gave to the poor and the needy, so therefore that handled that. Again, let's go back to scripture chapter and verse. Where is that? Show that to me in the Bible. That, is, that does not exist. And so would God, can God trust you with a million dollars? Can he trust you with that? You need to ask yourself. Because usually... If you, are, if you are a seed stealer, you heard what the apostle said? I'm going to talk a lot about what the apostle said. If you are a seed stealer, you're going to steal the seed when the millions show up. If you are a, if you are a seed stealer, when the millions show up, it is going to, I receive your seed, it is going to magnify who you truly are. Now, I take my seed and I go out to the club. Or I take my seed and I go, oh, now I, I, finally, did, I finally get the money now to buy my Lamborghini. <laughs> I finally got what I need to get my Rolls Royce. I finally got what I need to buy me all this stuff. It's okay about the stuff. Don't get me wrong. But did you sow a seed off before you got the stuff? I ain't even started. Anyways, without training properly, you will eat your seed or you, you will destroy yourself with the harvest. Now, let me say these questions to you. If you believe the church should be broke, you're in the wrong place. If you believe the church shouldn't talk about money, you're in the wrong place. However, if you believe that God sacrificed his son so that we can live a life of abundance, you're on the right side. You're in the right place. Amen? Amen. Amen? Amen. Let's go to... Let me, let me finish talking a little bit about what Apostle said, and then we're going to go to, we're going to get ready for a second, uh, no, uh, hang on just a second. I want to go to, I think it's Second Chronicles 9 and 6, so get ready for Second Chronicles 9 and 6. Um, he's talking about this past uh, title, he's been talking about money coming stewardship. It's how we handle the seed, how we handle the money. You have to, how are you ha currently handling your situation? We have people that has gone to school for, to handle finances, uh, to make sure that you have everything in order. We have people that, uh, that take accounting and have all these things. Are you a good steward of what God has placed in your hand so that he can give you more? There's several examples in the word of God when the Lord gave them some money and he saw how they handled it. Matter of fact, the one that wasn't good enough, he took that from him. So let's, let's, let's go into, uh, he said, Apostle said, we need to wear a balance, wearing a balanced financial anointing. And that he's training us in his wealth, his prosperity, his abundance, his increase, his overflow. 
in behalf of the earth ram, on the earth ram, in the earth ram, I'm sorry, on his behalf. Stewardship training. God is expecting the power of surrendered stewardship to be manifested in my life. I want you to say that. Can you put yourself and say my life? God is expecting the power of surrendered stewardship to be manifest in my life at the level where I am right now. See, you need to manifest where you are, and, and you can't keep up with Sister Sally. Sister Sally making so $200,000 because God has tremendously blessed her. Whether she has a business, whether she grew up in wealth, whether whatever it is, Sister Sally making do whatever she can. But at this time in your life, you sow where you are. But keep on sowing so that God can provide more. But if you don't sow where you are, if you don't plant nothing, what you going to get? I asked you earlier, are you a seed stealer? One of the questions, these are, these are things coming from a pastor, amen. Have you ever been trained to fight prosperity as an evil lifestyle? These are questions. And you, you could say, yeah. Because people have talked you against the church having money. They've talked to you that you said, why, by and by. Oh, we're going to make it to the other side. Oh, when I get to heaven, it's going to be great. The streets of pain will go, no more pain, no more sickness, no more disease. I won't be crying no more. Woe is me, woe is me, woe is me. Are you talking against this God-given assignment to the body of Christ? If you don't know about Apostle Leroy Thompson Sr., if you ever never heard of him, I suggest you Google him if this is your first time in the house. If you do know about him, I, I, I suggest that you read every piece of his material. Go back since the 90s and see how God, God gave money coming to Apostle Leroy Thompson Sr. in the 90s. And it is still evolving. It is still coming to fruition. It just keep on. Amen. Oh, God is good. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Demonstrators, money coming demonstrators walk and live in the mystery of kingdom wealth. Kingdom wealth is about manifestation, not just about what you have. Kingdom wealth can come through at any moment, at any time. At any moment and at any time. Now, Apostle <laughs> gave this to us <clears throat> several years ago. He said this on, on Wednesday. He said, kingdom wealth can come, can, can come at any amount at any time. But several years ago, he said, God can get anything from anywhere at any time through anybody to me. So it's not up to me to try to figure out where this wealth is going to come from. The Bible tells us that the wealth of the sinners is laid up for the just. So the Bible already identifies some things, but he also does not. It, it can, he's shown us that it can come from a fish mouth. Amen. God is almighty, and he can provide it whenever he wants to, at any time he wants to. Amen? Amen. Amen. He can send increased checks. He can do whatever he want to do at whatever given time. He can provide debt cancellation for student loans. He just can come up with it. Glory to God. Anything that he wants to do, he can pay off. Somebody, some great, great uncle can leave you some money that they ain't never seen or heard of. God can put it to you any kind of way. It ain't up to me to figure out where it's coming from. I just do my part and sow my seed. Amen? You can't measure kingdom wealth, the apostle said. Let's go to nine, uh, 2 Corinthians 9 and 6. I got my little, I didn't bring my glasses because my glasses are sitting in the parking lot in Darrell, Louisiana, in my car. Whoo, glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I'm going to read out of the ESV. I think it'll break it down. It'll take away some of the doubts, the dials and the doubts and all that stuff and help our understanding. 
So, Father, give us ears to hear, amen, and eyes to see and a soul to understand. So I'm asking the Holy Ghost to open up your eyes right now, open up your spiritual ears right now so that you can hear what the Spirit is saying, amen? So it says, the cheerful giver is the title of this. It says, the point is this, whosoever soweth sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whosoever soweth bountifully will also reap bountifully. Each one must give as he has decided in his heart, not reluctantly or of compulsion, for God loves a what? And God is able to make all grace abound to you, that having all sufficiency in all things at all times, you may abound in every good work as it is written. And I'm going to go down to 10. Now, everybody just, just think we made this up, but we didn't make it up. God always provides seed to a sower. Hallelujah. Amen. It says, 10, it says, he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food. So that's two things. Not only is he going to provide you seed to sow, but it also says he's going to provide bread for food. Amen? Amen. Amen. ESV. No, 2 Corinthians. Oh, I said Chronicles? Oh, forgive me. I'm, forgive me, forgive me. I'm, I'm going to go to 2 Chronicles today, but that, that ain't where I want to be right now. Do I need to go over that again? All right, let's go over it again, because I, I ain't making it up. I guess y'all looking at me out there saying, what in the world? Let's go. The cheer forgiver. The point is this. Whosoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. And whosoever sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Each one must give as he has decided in his heart, not reluctantly or under compulsion. For God loves a what? Cheerful giver. And God is able to make all grace abound toward you. Yeah. So that having all sufficiency in all things, what? At all times. So that sounds like nothing broken, nothing missing, doesn't it? Amen. You may abound in every good work as it is written. Now let's go to 10. He, he will always provide seed to a sower. Shama, glory to God. Amen. He who supplies seeds to a sower and bread for food will supply and multiply your seed for sowing Hey, and increase the harvest of your righteousness. Amen. You will enrich in every work to be generous in every way, which through us will produce thanksgiving to God. For the ministry of this service is not only supplying the needs of the saints, hey, but it's also overflowing in many thanksgivings to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God will always provide a seed to a sower. Amen. Amen. In the 10th verse, he did not only ask you to give something that he didn't give to you first because he provided the seed. Amen. He provided the job. He provided everything. Some, most of you, most of you in here, and I'm going to say it this way because I, I ain't going to say all of you because some of us has gotten a deeper revelation. But most of us in here think their job is their source. Most of us in here think that they get the seed from the job, that the job is the one provided because I worked hard. I've been, I, wait a minute, I, I, I was talking one time and I was telling somebody, oh, I got to prepare my seed and I got to do all these things. I was working and I was doing some things and they, they said to me, shoot, I ain't giving all that credit to God. I'm the one work all hard at night. I say, what? I say, so at any time, at any hour, at any moment, God can just say, and you out of here. But you didn't. Think you better, you didn't got besides yourself and think you better than God and think that you have you created yourself 
Like we have these people to come in here trying to change who they are. I'm going to always talk about it. If you get offended, you're in the wrong place. But God did not make a mistake when he made you a male or a female. There is no mistakes in God. Amen. And we may have relatives, we may have children, we may have whatever that has got confused in their mind and thought that I'm supposed to be something else. Wrong, not, you're wrong. God don't make no mistakes. He is, he is absolute in everything that he made. Now, don't have God put out his resume like he had to do with Job. He loves to give out his resume of who he is, everything he has, and what he can do. So don't be shocked, and don't let nobody confuse you. you got to be bold about the things of God. And you can't let nobody come in this church and tell you, well, you, you, you discriminated against me. Well, if that's what you want to call it, but then it's going to be discrimination. Because I'm on God's side. Amen. If he made you a boy, you a boy. To become a man. Amen. If he made you a woman, you a woman. Guess what he did? He planted a seed. It started with a seed. So I tell you, he didn't, I'm, I'm going to ask you this. What's your name? Tyler. I'm going to ask you this, Tyler. You from this area? You from the country, as, the, as you won't call it? So have you ever had any farmers in your, in your family? So have, you, have your family ever planted tomatoes and got watermelon? <laughs> My grandparents are farmers. They planted and they got just what they planted. Amen. So if God planted a seed in a woman, if he planted that seed, he already knew what it was. He already knew from the beginning of time because God says, I know the strings of your head. Yeah. So he didn't make no mistake and say, oh, I started off. You know, they got these crazy people say, I started off as a woman. But then all of a sudden, God changed and changed his mind. That is a cap for the young generation. I don't know if you older people know what that means. <laughs> Woo, glory to God. Let me move on. Let me move on. I got, I got on stuck over there. But it, but it started with a seed. Amen? Amen? Glory to God. Welcome, Tyler. Hallelujah. God provides seed to a sower. You need to ask yourself, are you a sower or are you a seed stealer? Now, that's, that's tough because we know sometimes that we just didn't sow our seed. We know sometimes that we came about, we know sometimes that we came about and God told us to sow and we held our hand back. Thank God for mercy and grace. And thank God for repentance. And thank God for a God of second chances. Yes. Amen? Yes. The seed will always come with instructions, Apostle said. He said instructions, direction, insight. The seed will come with direction. So when, when you get seed, sometimes immediately, I got a seed. Let me tell y'all this time. I got a seed. We were, uh, what were we doing, Apple? She must be in the back. I got a seed. Um, I was cleaning up. And um, the Lord told me, go in there and it's time you clean up all this mail. I, had, I thought it was all junk mail. And I was going to burn it, you know, so I pulled all this mail together and then, then he said, just go ahead and lay it all out on the table. So I got me this long table, put it in my kitchen, and I was just putting it in order. Okay, you over here, you over there. And I was just organizing my mail. Then I saw this unfamiliar envelope that wasn't junk. And I say, hmm, I wonder what's in this envelope. So I opened the envelope, and it was a check. The check had to be six months to a year old. So it was a check. 
And as soon as I opened the check, <clears throat> the Lord told me it wasn't for me. He said, now that's seed. And I think either I was coming off my job or I wanted to come off my job or my husband was coming off his, but I think we were sowing toward coming home. He's told this story before. But anyway, I knew that I wasn't supposed to do that. I don't even think I cashed the check. I, don't even, I think I put for deposit only in Life Construction Church because God told me that that was not my money. That was seed. I'm going to tell you about the harvest on that seed. Just a little while. I'm going to tell you how good God is. I think it was maybe $1,100. It wasn't a big, a huge amount. I think it was like $1,100 maybe the check was. But anyways, it wasn't my, my check. Another thing came out of that verse was while you sowing, going to the next level, God is going to feed you. See, this is what happens most of the time. You're thinking, well, I sold. I've been sowing. I've been here and sowing for three years, and I ain't got no harvest. There's a difference between the time that you sow. There's an in-between time is where we get antsy at before we get the harvest. See that antsiness? Let me tell you what we do doing the antsiness. We discover, we get, a, we get a minimum raise on our job, so we discover, hmm, now that I got this minimum raise, I can go buy me another car. I didn't pay for this one. Then I had two cars. I didn't pay for this one. And then God was providing you that increase to provide seed. But you say, hmm, I got, it's in between now. And then you realize that I ain't got enough to make my note next month. But you got an increase and you had calculated but you didn't calculate the cost of living. And you didn't calculate that the light bill might go up. You didn't calculate that the washing machine might have broke. Because when you're a, steal, when you're a seed stealer, the canker word comes for your seed. He comes for your overflow. He comes for everything that's over and above your regular money. So that in between time is where we got to walk in the wisdom of God. We cannot allow the enemy to say, it's time to shop. Whoever planted, tell her again, let me ask you another question. Whoever planted tomatoes, and then the next week when you see just a little leaves raise up, you don't see a tomato came out yet, and you say, whoops, let me go ahead and get half the tomato out. Have we ever did that before? We got to wait on the true harvest. We can't just go in the in-between time when he's blessing you and blessing when you got to put a little bit more seed in the ground. But let me ask you this. When you do receive part of the harvest, what's inside the tomato? Seed. So what you do with that seed that was inside the tomato? You replant the seed. You don't eat up everything. You got to go and have some seed to replant. I told you, if you didn't come to hear about money, you're in the wrong place. We, we, the church, have been so quiet on this subject that we don't talk about it, and that's why the church is so broke. Because nobody going to train you how to save some money. they just trying to get your money. And I'm trying to tell you today, we're not trying to get something for and from you. We're trying to get something to you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Sowing is exceeding grace of God in me. Say that with me. Sowing is a exceeding grace of God in me. Glory to God. Apostles say, these are a lot of apostle notes. I, I, I ain't come up with this on my own, I tell you. Praise God. Sowing is the mystery of the kingdom. Never stop sowing no matter how much you have. 
So if your harvest and your farmers and your, if, it was oftentimes my grandparents, they didn't get a, a full harvest. They didn't get everything that they wanted. But what did they do? Did they say, well, I ain't planting next week. I ain't going to plant next year because I only got a small harvest. No. They planted again and again and again and again. That was their livelihood. They, kept, they just kept on planting. So we got to keep on planting. planting or sowing. Amen? No, never stop sowing no matter how much you have. Apostle said, if you not, if you not train to sow, you will mess up the whole flow. Not just the flow, but the entire flow, you're going to mess it up if you ain't trained to sow. Because as it start coming in, you're going to start spending, and you're going to start spending prematurely. And then you're going to be broke. And then you're not going to have nothing to take care of the winter. And then you're not going to have nothing to take care of the summer. And then your mind going to be getting to worry. And then you're going to go helping the Lord out. And then you're going to get a bunch of Ishmael's. <laughs> Sowing determ determines your spending. Sowing, you need to have sowing should be by the direction of the Holy Spirit. Not by a man or a woman standing up here and telling you, Sister Tammy, today you need to sow $100. I feel like you need to sow $1,000. Rebuke it. Because I ain't the Holy Ghost. Understand that? The Holy Ghost is the one that needs to tell you what to sow and when to sow. Like I explained to you, the Holy Ghost told me that that $1,100 was not for me. It was to sow. You watching my time, Emmanuel? Because we're going to flip on over. Praise God. We're doing good with time. Amen. Don't allow your sowing grace to be turned into a disgrace. Say stewardship. Stewardship. Divine stewardship anointing must rest upon all of money coming demonstrators. We, knew, we need to know how to handle what you have, knowing that all I have is under God's command. God owns everything. I own nothing. If you can just comprehend that God owns everything and I own nothing, you're going to be free today. Because uh, the Bible says, oh, God has everything. The earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. So I don't really own anything. I'm in here. He's loaned me some things while he, I'm here on earth to stewardship over, but it don't really belong to us. And all these men and all these scientists and all these people think they've created, they didn't discover what God already created on the earth. And then they won't take ownership. And then they won't be smarter than God. Girl, what? Mm. No. God owns everything, and I own glory to God. When you can get that, truly get that revelation, you won't hold so tight to your seed. It's easy to have plenty of money, Apostle said. Now, I'm going to tell you, when I've heard that for the first time, I clenched in my seat. Yes, Lord, it's easy. Apostle said that, and I was like, yeah, it's easy to have plenty of money. When you're debt free and when you don't have nothing to worry about, everything is good. Amen. Your whole life is good. You think differently. You walk differently. You smile differently. Good morning to everybody. <laughs> Amen. You don't have no bad Mondays, blue Mondays. Whoo! You ain't got to get a coffee in the morning. I got to get a coffee because I got I, I to gotta have my, I can't do anything without my caffeine. I can't do anything without my God. Caffeine is not my thing. I love to drink coffee, but what I've learned is coffee not good for me. So I did what I did with coffee, cut it off. I want to live a long, wealthy, satisfying life. Woo, glory to God. Where that scripture at? 
It's in there that we'll live a long, wealthy, satisfied life. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. I'm just going to continue on his notes. Go to uh, Philippians 4.19. Ah, let me read it in. Let me go here. Glory to God. Because I, my little extra help, the magnifying glasses. The scripture says, I mean, I'm going to stay in the ESV. Thank you. And my God will supply every need of yours according to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus. To our God and Father be glory forever. Amen. Apostle said something about that scripture. Because you got to go up before the, when it reads before. He said, I'm going to say what he said, and then I'm going to go up. It says, my God shall supply all my need, all my seed. He going to supply the seed anyhow. God always provides seed to a sower. And see, what happened was, if you go back and do a little research, Paul was talking about how the church took care of his need. They took care of the man of God financially. And then he came up with Philippians 4.19. It's important that we understand when we're sowing, we're sowing at the will of God. And don't be intimidated. Like, like, like Apostle made a statement, he said, money coming demonstrated is not for cowards. You can't be a coward and sow. You can't be scared to sow. Amen. Scared, well, if I sow this money, I ain't going to have nothing to make it to the rest of the week. If I do this, I'm not going to have this. If I do this, what about next year? Next year? What? I serve a God that on the cows on a thousand hills. I serve a God that sits on gold, that walks on gold. Oh, my God. And I, I got to be worried about what's going to happen next year? We apparently don't serve the same God. When I read this scripture, go to Isaiah 119. Ah, uh, you know I like to read that. I want to read that in the ESV, but I'm also going to read it in um, the, 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 the Living Bible. Make sure you go the Living Bible. But, but let me read it in the ESV. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Shama. Thank you, Lord. What did I say, Isaiah 119? In the ESV, it says, if you are willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. If you are willing and obedient, you're going to eat the good of the land. Sounds like to me, I wrote something, and I want to make sure I say it the way I, I said it. It, it, it just get better and better. I want to say gooder and gooder, but y'all going to be looking at me. <laughs> yes, indeed. God's going to, Apostle talks about that this money coming demonstrated is only going to be for a remnant of people because you're going to have the naysayers out there. Matter of fact, you got a whole list of men supposed to be men of God. I don't know what they are. I ain't even going to give them that title talking against prosperity for the church. It is no, and they, then they named it as a prosperity gospel. It ain't no prosperity gospel. 
it is God is prosperity and everything about him is good. Amen. And everything about him prosperous. And he puts us in a position to prosper. And if we're his children, we're supposed to prosper. So they talk against it. So it's only going to be a remnant. But in this hour and in this time, God is going to catapult the remnant. You understand that? He's going to catapult you where you need to be. Because you are that, only that few that's going to take this and understand that. Understand? He will supply your need through your seed. You can't activate the riches of God without sowing. I'm going to tell you this. We, 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 Apostle, give us a chance to say money coming. And all of us hollering, money coming, money coming. <laughs> you can't, it, it ain't by your words. Just because you say money coming, that don't mean money coming. You know, we got our confessions. We got all our confessions. Some of us got them listed in the bathroom. Some of us got them listed in the wall. Some of us got us all over the place. And we confess it, confess it, confess it. But Tyler, if you don't plant no tomatoes, you're not going to. So if you don't plant no money, you're not going to get no money. Now, you're going to go out there and get what you work for. Some of us got three and four jobs. And then you see somebody riding around here, and it's like, what they doing? How they get that? And I'm working like a, I ain't going to say the slave, but I'm going to do that now. I'm going to say it again. You can say money coming all day long, all night long, with no seed in the ground. I'm going to say it like my daddy used to say it when he was trying to teach me math. A no from a no. <laughs> Apostle is spending a lot of time so that we can catch this revelation. Actually, he's actually, he's spending weeks and weeks and weeks because he's writing a book. So everything, all these things that you hear him saying, it's going to be in his book. I can't wait. To, I want to be one of the first ones to purchase the book because I want to meditate on it and meditate on it and meditate on it. So it becomes more of a reality in my life. Amen. Amen. You got to soak in it, this stuff. Ask the Holy Spirit to reveal the mystery to you. Don't sit in the presence of God or don't sit in the presence of hearing all this word and sit here and act like the Pharisees. This is for the church. Amen. And you sit in in doubt because somebody that messed up your soul to think you that money don't belong to the church. Uh, all the preachers just got everything. I was watching on a, I went, I was scrolling every now and then I scroll. And one of the people had happened to ask one of the prominent ministers um, that teaches the word. I'm not going to call his name. But they asked him, um, and it's not apostle, it was somebody else. They, she, was, she was trying to catch him in a trap. And she asked him, she said, yeah, why do you have to have, why do you don't ride on a plane with regular people? And so he was endeavoring to explain to her why? She was a news person. She was asking him these questions. And he said, he, he, before he can get it out, uh, 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 it's not all that. Tell the truth. It's, it's just that you, you want to ride in a, in a plane because of this. You know, she was trying to trap him in words. And he was like, mm-mm. He got all up in her face. No. I'm riding in this plane to preach the gospel. So if I have to preach the gospel in Brazil, wouldn't it be advantageous for me to get my own personal jet if God had called me to internationally now God has called some of these men and women of God internationally and they got to go wait in the line be checked from head to toe and they go and preach the gospel they got to explain themselves when God then provided the provisions for them to purchase the plane it didn't get none of your money that's what I want to ask the lady. Did your money buy any of this? Well, shut the heck up. <laughs> you got to be bold about the things of God. And you can't let nobody tell you anything that's not in this word. Amen. Amen. I guarantee you, if Jets was invented when Jesus was around, baby, he would have
could have had several jets. Guess what? He knew it was coming. He said, don't worry about it. It's coming. <laughs> Shoot. Jesus would have just flew over there you know, on his own. Glory to God. You got to ask the Holy Ghost to unclog your ears when it comes to money coming demonstrators and to re remove all the naysayers from around you. If they live in your house, I ain't going to tell you kick them out. <laughs> but close their lips when it comes to talking about this word. Because you don't know what you're talking about, man. You don't know what you're talking about, son. You don't know what you're doing. So if you can't talk with this word, say, close your lips. Don't let God do what he did. When, it, when, it's, when you're in doubt, God will show you who the boss. Just ask Zechariah. Did he not close his mouth till the baby was born? Before John the Baptist was born, God closed his mouth because he was in doubt. Now, go do your research if you ain't never heard of it before. Trust, apostle said, trust what God tells you as it relates to sowing. He will never fail you. Never. Money coming demonstrators, all those God has trained to handle the wealth, the prosperity, the abundance, the increase, and the overflow into the earth realm on the kingdom, uh, into the earth realm on the kingdom's behalf. Let's go. I want, you to, I want you to read this. And some of us have a problem of sowing upward. We're so used to busy sowing downward. When I say downward, there's nothing wrong with the poor or sowing into the poor. The Bible says when you give to the poor, you do what? You lend to the Lord. So let me ask you this. When you borrow, huh, if you borrow $20 from me, you said you borrowed it, right? So what would I get back from you? $20, except when you go to the bank, they're going to charge you what? Interest. But the Bible tells us when we give to the poor, we lend to the Lord. So God will return that money back to you. Even if the person default on their loan, God will make sure you get that money back. Amen? Amen. However, the seed principle is increased. The Bible says 30, 60, and 100 for a return. Amen? Yes. So the seed is different. But we have a problem. I want to go to, now I want to go to 2 Chronicles. Uh, not 2 Chronicles. I want to go to 1st. Uh, hang on, hang on, hang on. My notes. I get the writing. I get excited and I get the writing. I'm going ahead of myself, but... I want to um, go to 2 Chronicles 9. Just wait. Hang on. Hang on right there. But, but we have a problem of sowing upward. We say apostle has all this stuff. And so we don't, have, we don't want to sow upward. But that's where the increase is. If you sow into good soil, you produce a good harvest. But if you sow in soil that don't really produce very much, you're, about, you're going to produce a little minimum. So it tells us to sow upward. So we practice sowing upward, amen? amen. Let's go to First Chronicles. I want to read a little bit of this because um, I want you to know. I want you to identify that this is Solomon. What was Solomon? What was? What do you identify Solomon with in the Bible? He was the what? The wisest, but the what? Richest. Richest. Amen. So let, let's see what happened. What did I say? First Chronicles 9? Second Chronicles 9? Okay, 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 okay. I'm, I want to talk to you about the queen of Sheba. Now, she was a queen, right? That means she was what? She was what? Hmm. I'm going to start off with the first verse. And I want you to pay attention to the details. Amen? 
Now when the queen of Sheba heard of the fame of Solomon, she came to Jerusalem to test him with hard questions. Having a very great, say that word with me, retinue and camels and bearing spices and very much gold. What did, what did he have? Very much gold and precious stones. And when she came to Solomon, she told him all that was on her mind. Now, this is what the queen bought. She had the gold and the stones and the spices. She told him all that was on her mind, and Solomon answered all her questions. There was nothing hidden from Solomon that he could not explain to her. And when the queen of Sheba had seen the wisdom of Solomon, the house that he had built, the food on his table, the seating of his officials and the attendance of his servants and the clothing, his cupbearers, and the clothing and his burnt offerings that he offered at the house of the Lord, there was no more breath in her. When there's no more breath in here, what she did? She fell out. God wants us to be so wealthy when your friends and your cousins and, and Uncle Boo Boo and them and Uncle John and them come see you. He want them to fall out. God want them to fall out. Now the queen was wealthy herself. So why would she be so impressed to go to King Solomon's house? Because and he was so wealthy. And tell me what? If he was so wealthy, why did she feel impressed to bring some gifts? She was sowing what? And where she was sowing? Upward. So don't hold back your hand because somebody got it. Keep on sowing. You want to be in that same position. I'm going to keep on sowing to apostle because I want to be just like him. Now, you might not like that. You might just say, I just won't get my foot in the heaven door and I'm by and by. I just won't live on this land, poor and broke, and I'll be all right. Just let me get on in the foot in the door and you'll be happy. That's not what he died for. You should have got raptured when Jesus died. You should have said, God, I'm saying now let's go on to glory. What's the purpose of him dying? Yes, to get the law saved, but yes, for you to live an overcoming life. Because I'm going to tell you this. How many people are going to be impressed by you standing up with a sign saying, feed me? And how many people are you going to get saved? None. I'm doing better than you, homie. I don't need the sign. So you're not going to win the loss if you're broke. Somebody ain't going to like it. Y'all don't. If you don't like it, hmm. Say, ouch. Some. <laughs> oh, glory to God. God, apostle said this. I love it. God should have a whole lot of people with a lot of money, with plenty of money. Amen? Amen. Our brother in the Lord, we, we on this salvation reformation, meaning that we are asking the body of Christ to get about our business and our business is to save the lost and that is by witnessing and by telling them about Jesus and Jesus died for them so that we can live this life more abundantly that's our that's our commission is all of our commission is to win the lost amen, amen. and so our one of our brothers in the Lord this week, they turned in 1,040 souls. They, they're working in the mission field, and 1,040 people got saved. Amen. That's something to shout about. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you. Hallelujah. And it wasn't hard for him to get them saved. Amen? Amen? So you need to ask yourself, how many people you got saved this year? I ain't talking about his 1,040, but how many people did you tell about Jesus this year alone? How many people did you ask the Holy Spirit to tell you to tell somebody about Jesus? It's our commission, y'all.
Amen. Say, my broke days are over. My broke days are over. My abundant days has come. My abundant days has come. I said that in my apostle's voice. Amen. Amen. Hey, glory to God. Hallelujah. Let's go to John 10.10. 10. I'm going to use all the scriptures that he used. Amen. You keeping me? You keeping me? You watching? Amen. Because we're going to shift over on the entire apostle. Amen. Amen. Don't forget Apostle said, don't forget the criteria answer to abundance. And that's John 10, 10. We're going to read that together. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Shama, glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Sometimes I just, I just feel like testifying and tell you what God has done, he's, what he's continually doing in our lives. Amen. 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 Oh, I'm in the wrong. I'm in John. I'm in the wrong one. Hang on. John 10, 10. John 10, 10 says, everybody should know that by heart, but let's read it together. Glory to God. The thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it more abundantly. Amen? Amen. So if he wants you to have life more abundantly, why are we selling for something left? You want to know why? Because the enemy came to steal, kill, and destroy. He come to take your thoughts. He come after your soul. And your thoughts is stuck on all that buffoonery that the world trying to teach us. You better turn that mess off. Turn it off. It's buffoonery. Oh, glory to God. I come to give life and give it more abundantly. Glory to God. Let's read Ephesians 3.20. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Now, some of these scriptures, you know, we've read through the past three weeks. I hope you ain't get familiar with them because you'll never get a revelation. Every time you read it, you should get an increase of revelation. Amen? Amen. What did I say, Ephesians 3.20? Yeah, 3.20. Now to him who is able to do far more abundantly than all that we can ask or think according to the power at work within us. Exceedingly abundant, the revelation, the insight, the understanding, the following order that I can do it. We got to not stop letting the thief block us from Ephesians 3.20. Don't let the thief block your soul from hearing the truth. You got to get rid of the thief. You got to understand that God wants me to have this. So when I'm telling somebody about Jesus, they're not looking at me and saying, I'm, you can go up to a millionaire and tell them about Jesus. And don't, they ain't, ain't walking up there like a coward. Because knowing you didn't sown and you didn't sown the way it is, I don't have no problem talking to millionaires. You pack it. But the problem is we got our head down and we're talking to them and we, they think they're better than us. They think they have a ride. No, you ain't a ride. I got something you need, brother Amen. or sister. I don't want you to end up like the rich man, Lazarus, like the rich man, when he had to reach out and say, Lazarus, please, Lord, let him, just let him drop this a little bit off his tongue. He, Apostle taught us grace is ownership. That we are already prosperity owners, abundance owners. Amen. Say the power of money coming is in me. The power of money coming is in me. 
It's not for a group, you all, it's for me. That's what you gotta understand. You know, when you're in a group, you, you at work, you having lunch, and you're trying to say, man, you know, we have people that are posting a lot of apostle things, and the people don't understand it. So they're looking at, oh, you believe that? Girl, get from my, my table. Yeah, I believe it. Now, either you're going to let me listen to this, or you're going to get up off of my table. So it ain't for the group. It's a personal relationship with God. God's trying to get something to you so that you can do your assignment. It feels good. Let me tell you, some years ago, my husband, they were having an altar call, and they had some children come up. They were, they, they were joining the church. It was a family. And the children had, shoe, had pants on the pants. They were young boys, and the pants was way up to the, past the ankles. And I sat on that chair, and I sat, and I looked. And the mama was dressed pretty decently, but the boys, you can see that they was a little shame with their hat on. They didn't really want to get up. Their mama, you can see if she pulling them, come on, boy, trying to put them up there so they can join, and they just wanted to sit. And I sat there, and I said, Lord, you didn't give me the resources that I can't bless these boys with some, some pants and some clothes. So God told me then. Go take them shopping. Find out where they live. Take them to the store and take them shopping. And I did. I listened to the Holy Ghost. And you got to listen. Amen. Them boys are forever grateful. Amen. God wants you in position for opportunities like that. Amen. Did I go tell somebody that I did that? No. Nope. I did it in secret. Did I go up to the church and say, yeah, the boys that was up here last week, I took them shopping? Nope. There was another opportunity. There was a family that had went through a flood, and they had, uh, they didn't have, they couldn't, they were taking their, their drinks out of the, the cooler. They, had, they didn't have lights for a while, and so then the refrigerator had broke and all everything, their washing machine had broke. And I was just visiting with somebody else. And the Lord said, okay, this is your opportunity to buy a refrigerator and a freezer. And I said, yes, sir, I'm going to do that. I'm going to buy a refrigerator and a freezer. But guess what I did? I told my friend that I was with, you go order it, you go buy it, I'm going to pay for it, and don't you ever tell them where it come from. Because I wasn't about to get the credit for it because God told me to do it. Amen. And so I did that, and of course they, they did it. But you know, God has something, he's, he's peculiar. Sometimes... He wants you to, to get the credit for it. So many years passed, and the person found out who it was. That person said to me, what did it? I said, because it wasn't for me to tell you, because I didn't want you to treat me any differently. And guess what? I ain't your God. Amen. I wasn't trying to get, be supplying your need. Amen. You understand? Amen. So it's good sometimes to sow and not tell it where it come from because people, when you sow it into people, you become their God. That's why when you sow it into the pole, guess what? I ain't got nothing today. Last week, you helped me last week. Sister, can you help me this week? Brother, can you help me this week? They keep on knocking. They just keep on knocking because you have become their God. God didn't tell you to do that. He's the God. He's the one that gets the glory. He is the one that gets the credit. You give it all to him, baby. I didn't do it. And I told them. I said, oh, it wasn't me. It was God. Because if it was me, I would have said no. Amen. I'm just being frank. Can I be frank or do I need to be Sabrina? All right. All right. I'm telling you, we got to get rid of this buffoonery that God don't want the church blessed. And then you got to stop taking credit for it like it's something you did. Amen. Give God all the glory. Amen. Give him all the praise. Amen. Say this, I'll never be broke, I'll never be broke. another day in my life. Because it just keep on coming. Hallelujah. I said that again in my apostle's voice. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
God has a plan, y'all. And that plan, he told us, was Joshua 1.8. Amen? God has a plan. Let's go. Joshua 1.8. I'll be glad when our pastor get back. He been gone, y'all. <laughs> so I can sit my butt down. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I said Joshua 1 8. Amen. It's good to have a help me. Amen. Amen. I thank God for what he gave me in a man. I tell you the truth. Amen. That's why no woman can't satisfy me. I'm just telling you real. Thank God that God gave me a man. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Shama. I like to take them side ventures. Okay, Joshua, Joshua, where you at? Where you at? Where you at? Where you at? Here we go. 1-8. Joshua 1-8 says, this book of the law, let's read it together. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night so that you will be careful to do according to all that is written therein. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. Good success, amen? Apostle says we have to plant, and the med meditation part is the planting part. Amen. And then he gave us uh, Psalms 1, 1, and 3. But I'm, I'm going to stay on this uh, Joshua right now. Planting satanic power can't disturb the garden. He says satanic power can't disturb the garden. When you're planting and you're meditating and you're meditating on this word instead of meditating on strolling and listening to these men that then lost their mind trying to talk about my God. Because they ain't talking about the man of God. They're talking about my God because the man of God didn't make this up. He got it out of the word. So apparently, Amen. sir and madam, you got a problem with God, not the man of God. I'm telling you that when you meditate on this, when you just soak in it, that's the planning part. And it, it's going to get rid of the canker worms. It's going to get up the devourer. It's going to get rid of it all. Say, I'm a planter. I'm a planter. Once I plant, I meditate. And then it says, once I plant, I met my planting is to meditate. Then what I got to do after I meditate? What I got to do? Uh-uh. It tells, it gave us instructions. Nope. It have to, we have to observe to do. After we meditate, when you meditate on something, what you do next? Observe to do it. That's what the KJV says. It says observe to do. You know, pastors, he's a KJV man. I am too, but sometimes I get a little confused on them dials and stuff. So I like to go with different revelation so I can make it plain. Amen? Amen. Is that time for me to sit down? Now, we're going to have communion after service today, but we're going to listen to Apostle if, if those... If you feel necessary that you got to go, that you didn't got enough of, of me telling you that you a money coming demonstrator, if you got enough and you can't handle this money, mantle, you in the wrong place, like I said. Because it just keeps getting better and better. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Glory to God. Y'all know that we've had testimony after testimony when they've been sharing. Look, one lady got an 85% raise. One lady, got a, one lady got a $72 million contract. We had 35 plus houses paid off. $1.2 million building was built debt free. Shama. Mm. 
People calling some of the people in this house, talking about they trying to give them some land. We got people paying off their cars. Houses is next. Amen. 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 Debt free. Say debt free. free. It belongs to me. It belongs to me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God wants the gospel to travel first class, Apostle said. Don't hide your blessing. When he bless you real good, take a ride. You know, I, I'm having challenges. You know, my husband, uh, God blessed us with a, a motor coach. And I'm having challenges driving in a front seat, not because I'm trying to hide. It's because I'm sitting up so high. I'm like, when you go around them curves, I'll be like, ooh. <laughs> However, it's, it, it feels good taking a ride. It feels good. And I, I ain't trying to hide what God is doing in our lives. My mother-in-law, some years ago, she's, a, she not, she's not a talker like my husband. She just keep on doing stuff. She's just not a talker. She, God blessed her with this BMW. And, and, you know, you know, people, and she, she got her a license plate made. She went and got it made on her own. God is blessing me right now. Somebody need to say, God is blessing God me right, right now. Now. Right now. Hallelujah. Right now. Right now. And don't be afraid to sow. Can you, can you see yourself sowing $1,000? Can you see yourself sowing $2,000? Guess what? God provides the seed to the sower. Amen. Now, y'all know we're about to sow. We're about to go to Prosperity Revival. Wait till he get up and he start talking. Amen. You know, we're about to, uh, we about to, I receive your seed. We about to go to this prosperity Bible and the church, Life Construction Church, are we going to sow? We, we ain't sowing no 1,000. We ain't sowing no 2,000. We're going to sow up there. Amen. Everybody be trying to figure out how this many people can afford to sow that type of money. Because God provides seed to a sower, and we're going to keep seed in the ground at Life Construction Church because we just keep on coming. Because money just keep on coming. And guess what? God, we are part of that remnant that God is going to use to demonstrate this prosperity anointing. Amen? Amen. Amen. Just let them sow. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. So don't hide your blessing. Amen. They just keep on sowing. Pause it just a bit. They just keep on sowing, y'all. And they ain't sowing no little bit of money. They're not scared to sow. Ask the Holy Spirit to give you the courage to sow. Amen? Give you the courage. He'll, he'll restore money. I work this place. I work this place. I... I, I volunteered six months for this company. I volunteered six months. God not only replaced, I didn't ask for no check. They didn't, they didn't pay me. God paid me. And so six months later, I got a check for just as much if I would have worked. Them six months, God gave me a check for that amount. Not only did that, did God do that. What God is doing for life construction even now, I worked in this other school, I sold all my time, all my courage, all everything that I got. I served to the best of my ability another man's. Now God has blessed us with our own. Amen. And it's just about 
uh, with a shy of maybe five students, I think we, we're almost at the 200. God will do above what you imagine or think. And guess what? I didn't come here to do no child care. I said, I come here to retire, to relax, to just barely get it in. And God said, that, that ain't you part of this room, and that ain't you. So let God put this in your hand, but be obedient to it when he puts it in your hand. Stop waiting on somebody else to be the first one to sow. Oh, I ain't seen nobody else giving 500, so I ain't going to give 500. Did God tell you that? Don't, be the, don't, don't ignore the voice of God. Hear his voice so that he can keep providing seed to the soil. He has to be able to trust you. So if he see you're going to hold back your hand, he ain't putting that in your hand. Let's say if you're going to go eat it up or drink it up. I, shoot, uh, uh, what, it, what it is, and I don't even know if they call it a fifth of liquor no more, but it's called a, a thing of wine. I don't know what it costs, you know. But I'm telling you, they'll go buy a drink of wine before they'll give a dollar. We got to do better in the kingdom of God. God's trying to get something to you. Not from you. Say amen. amen. Let me ask you this. Are you the queen? Are you the queen? You ready? Can you be the queen? Hmm. Well, immediately after apostle, we're going to have prayer. We're going to have communion. So those, if you can't stay longer, I understand. But you might not want to leave. Enjoy. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's give the Lord a hand. Thank you for tuning into the service. If you would like to sow a seed, the different ways to sow should be at the bottom of the screen. You can scan the QR code. You can text sow seed to 866-891-0606, or you can mail your seed to P.O. Box 742, Petal, Mississippi, 39465. We also have a website. You can go to lccpetal.com, find a tab that says sow seed, to go ahead and sow that seed. Amen? All right. Now, if you are not, on BernardJackson.tv. What you waiting on? We have an Apple app. We have an Android app. We're on Fire Stick, Google TV, Roku TV, Apple TV. We're everywhere. So go ahead and download the app now. Amen. All right, next up. If you would like to be a part of our database, if you would like to be notified anytime we go live or anytime we have something going on, I want you to text LCC to 866 891-0606. Amen? Go ahead and close for the day. 2 Corinthians 5, 7. We walk by faith, not by sight. Life Construction Church, building the kingdom of God, one life at a time.